Hello, and welcome back to LearnSBOM.com. My name is Skyler, and I'm going to be walking you through Microsoft's SBOM tool called Salus. This is a manifest file validator and also a SPDX SBOM generator. You don't need any prerequisites to run it. To install it, you just need to go to the link in the description where I have their GitHub. They have a releases page, and you can just download whatever binary is useful for your machine. They have Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. After you install it, you should just be able to run the executable. I put a file path on it so I can run it from any directory. When you first run it, you should see this, the help page. It has the two commands, validate and generate. We're only going to be going over generate today, but I will just briefly explain how to do the validate command. So to start off, basing this slightly off of their documentation, the generate command requires a couple options to run. To start, we need these two. The build drop path is, as it says, the root folder of the drop directory for which the manifest file will be generated. So what this is going to do is it's just going to be the directory where we put the manifest file. And in that we have the SPDX file, and then we have the generated SBOMs. The build component path is where the folder containing the build components and packages are going to be. On their documentation, they recommend just doing the source code. It is just where your .csproj files are going to be. Unfortunately, it doesn't look recursively, so you can't have a master file that then splits up into multiple other directories that each have .csproj files. You can only put it all in one file and it'll only search that file and will not go recursively. The next things you need are package name, package version, and namespace URI base. So to start with these two first, package name is pretty self-explanatory, just the name the, of the package this SBOM represents. Most commonly, it'll just be the program that you're gonna be making. So in my case, I'm doing arcade-validation, so I would just have that as the package name. The package version, is just whatever version you're going to generate the package from. So for me, I'm just going to do version 1.0 just as demonstration purposes. But when you're creating your own SBOMs for your program, it would just be whatever version number you're at at the moment. And then the namespace URI base is the base path for the SBOM namespace URI. I'll go over this when we go over the SBOM itself, but basically it's just the URL start. So to get along with the command, we're going to be implementing the five things that I mentioned, but obviously to start, we need to call the program. So we're just going to call the Windows tool since I am on Windows and then generate. And then let's do the build drop path first. I'm just going to be doing the current directory. So dot slash. And then next we're doing dash BC for the component path. I'm going to be doing the SRC folder. It does have one file in there. That is a csproj file, so it'll be able to scan that file and look at all the dependencies that this program has. The next option is the dash pn, which is the project name. Again, as I said, I'm just going to do arcade validation because that's just the name of the project. And then dash pv, which is the version number. I'm doing 1.0 just for demonstration purposes. Obviously, you would be doing whatever version number you're currently working on. And then finally, the namespace, NSB. This is just the URL that you're going to be appending to. I'll explain that when we go over it after we generate the SBOM. But for me, I'm just going to do HTTPS learn sbom.com you can check out more of the demos that we've done on other tools over there as well now that we have all of the five required options we're going to run this and look at the output okay so it was done running and it does have a quick bit of information of just what it's doing and then here we have a table of what kind of was going on so it has a component detector id column with just a bunch of components the detection time it took, and then the components found in this project specifically. So for us, it only found one, and it was nu get. That was the only component that it found in this project specifically, and these are all the components that are on this machine. Although it found the component, it isn't explicitly referenced, so there is obviously a difference there, which is why they have these two separate columns. 
But this table isn't really what we're focusing on. What we want to look at is in this file, the arcade validation, there is now a new file that's just underscore manifest, which includes the SPDX version, and then two manifest files. The one we're looking at is the JSON file. So if we open this up, we can see that there is a bunch of information. The first section is the files section. So this is all first party files that have been documented. There is an SPDX ID and then it has some hashing algorithms. They do SHA-256 and SHA-1. Then if we close up the checksum section, it then goes to licenses and copyright information. And that is the end of that one file. So it does do this for every file in the directory that you mentioned. And this is just first party files. So if we skip through the files, we then get to packages. So this is any of the packages that it found so for us, it would be and you get, And then included in that is the arcade validation first party program that you wrote. That is also included in the packages section, but with a way more condensed form. So it only has what files it contains and not all the information to those files. So if we just look in the packages section, it has the container one name of just a package that this program is using, SPDX ID, some more information on that any license information, and then external references. So it does have the Perl reference type, and then what supplier it is from. To look at the package that is a first party package, we can see that it has a name, SPDX ID, and then a download location. Since it's a first party reference and we didn't need to fetch it from anywhere, there isn't a location specifically. It also has information on licenses, which should definitely be the same as the files. And then again, it has a supplier. The final section to the packages section for the first party package that you wrote is the files that it contains. So if we just scroll down, there are a bunch of files and it is all included in this file section as well. So when we close that up, we then get to the more metadata section. So we first have external document references, just in my case, there are none. And then it has relationships. So if you have a bunch of packages, obviously this will be more filled up. And then finally, we get to the fully metadata section. It's for some reason at the end, most XPDX versions I've seen are at the top, but I don't really think it matters. It includes the SPDX version, licenses, IDs, names, and then the document namespace. So as I said before, when we were creating the command itself, we have the PN, which is the project name, we have PV, which is the version, and then the URL. So this all gets appended. So we have HTTPS LearnSBOM.com, which gets appended first, and then we have the project name, and then the project version. We also include after that a unique ID, just so that you can use the same project name, project version, and namespace if you wanted to, and it wouldn't overwrite another SBOM that you would have created. It also has timestamps and the creator of the SBOM, which since this is a Microsoft tool, it'll just be Microsoft. So as I said, we can also go over the validate file pretty quickly. To start, we need the build drop path, just like in generate, which is just the root folder of the drop directory to validate. It then needs, I say needs, it doesn't need, but if it's anywhere other than the build drop path and then in the manifest directory, you do need to specify where the manifest will be validated. It does need the output path, which is where the output JSON should be written to. And then finally, it needs the manifest info, info option, which is just the list of a name and version of the manifest format you're using. Again, I'm not going to be going over this, but given the documentation, it should be pretty straightforward to try and figure out yourself. Overall, this program is best for generating SBOMs of first party software. I haven't seen any SBOM generators that focus primarily on first party software like this one does. Um, they almost solely focus on open source software that they can reach out to get the information from outside sources and then bring back and put in your SBOM specifically. It doesn't scan files recursively, so you can't scan multiple CSProj files in different directories in the same command, like other projects I've seen do. But there is a trade-off. You can, in fact, scan the files that you've written yourself and include those in your SBOM, which other programs have not done really at all. If you have mostly open source software, I would generate an SBOM 
with a different program and then scan your first party software with this one and combine them. Or of course you can always use this one and scan the same program but different csproj files. Or you can always move all the csproj files into one folder and that will also do the trick. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Skylar from LearnSBOM.com. If you enjoyed it, we have a bunch of other demos on our YouTube channel, and you can check out our website to learn more about SBOMs and watch our demos as well. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you for checking out this video. If you really liked it, be sure to check out our other videos right here, and then you can also subscribe right up top here. And again, thank you. Bye-bye.